drones, like many technological breakthroughs, started with the military. Coming up, I'll share with you two incredible military advancements that you won't be buying online anytime soon. Stay tuned. More powerful than a drone, Boeing plans to upgrade the flight control computer systems of its F-A-18 E and F Super Hornet and F-15 EX Eagle II fighter aircraft, incorporating fly-by-wire or FBW technology. This is a serious upgrade. FBW replaces manual flight controls with electronic interfaces, simplifying the system by reducing weight and complexity compared to mechanical controls. This results in easier maintenance and better fuel efficiency. Additionally, the FBW system's quad redundancy enhances safety by providing four processing paths for control commands, allowing for fault detection and isolation during flight. That means the FBW system ensures that if one processing path fails, the remaining three can maintain control and avoid catastrophic failure. The evolution of flight is quite extraordinary to watch, but there's also exciting advancements being employed beneath the sea. Coming up, I'll reveal a breakthrough in underwater military technology, but first, it's our premier product highlight, sponsored by Mauser Electronics. Thirsting for knowledge? The Arduino AKX00051 Programmable Logic Control Starter Kit is designed for hands-on learning and industrial automation education. It offers over 20 hours of lessons through the Explore PLC course. Students learn about PLCs, Modbus RS-485 communications, and simulated industrial systems. The kit supports five IEC 611 31-3 programmable languages in the user-friendly Arduino PLC IDE, simplifying programming and integration. Cloud-ready hardware enables IoT projects with remote control, while extensive documentation and tutorials provide additional support. The kit includes all of these projects accessed through one easy-to-use portal connected to the Arduino cloud. Stay educated, head over to mauser.com today and check out the Arduino AKX 00051 Programmable Logic Controller Starter Kit. And now, to kickstart your PLC education, we present David's Corner. Thanks, Andy. After we move on from discrete modules of PLCs, which usually are the very first entry point because they're simple to understand, we then move on to what we call analog modules. Now, there can be analog inputs and outputs, but probably the most common is analog inputs. So if you find a PLC with built-in analog, they'll usually be limited to analog inputs, or they'll have more inputs than they will outputs. But either way, it's the same. We're working with voltages that are varying between zero and a full voltage. Now, sometimes that comes across in the form of current. There's a few different strategies. Zero to 10 volts is very common. Zero to 20 milliamps is common. Four to 20 milliamps is common. And for some systems, zero to five volts is also very common. There are variations of these depending on what equipment you're working with, but that's the set of the ones that you'll find the most common. These modules come in different form factors. This module, or card, is on a printed circuit board that is inserted right into the front of the space in a PLC. This module has a DIN rail connector, and the DIN rail connector allows it to be connected next to the PLC, and then a wiring harness allows it to be slid and locked permanently into place. Other controllers, like this popular Arduino board, this includes five volt inputs, the zero to five volt range, and they're built directly onto the board. Here behind me are a couple of examples of PLCs that also include both built-in and modular analog inputs and outputs. Since we have voltages and currents that can vary among a whole range, they're great for pressures, temperatures, and other variations which instead of providing a switch that's above or below a certain point like a proximity sensor, these analog inputs give us more information about our system so that we can make better actions. Possibly a downside to those is that they're a bit more expensive and sometimes a little bit more difficult to operate. But in return, we want to be sure that the information that we're collecting about our system is thorough enough to be fully used to make the best system that we possibly can. Andy, back to you. Sir Winston Churchill once claimed, 
He who controls the skies controls the world. However, the sea remains a crucial military strategy for disrupting supply chains, and NATO understands this very well. NATO has signed a 60 million euro contract with Exhale Robotics to supply Caster Sea underwater mine disposal vehicles and training equipment to bolster the Belgian and Royal Netherlands navies. The Caster Sea is a remotely operated vehicle that can be controlled from land or sea and is designed to neutralize various types of mines even in high currents. It meets NATO standards by incorporating technologies that reduce acoustic and magnetic signatures. The Caster is part of Exhale's Unmanned Mine Countermeasure Integrated System, or UMIS, which includes a full suite of unmanned vehicles and software for comprehensive mine disposal operations. The world is a dangerous place, and the two military developments we shared with you demonstrate how engineers and our brave soldiers keep us safe. For their service, we are truly grateful. We are also grateful to you for tuning in, and we hope you'll explore more of our videos by clicking the link. See you next time.